What's up guys, welcome to Knocks Out Comics where we talk all things comics and manga. I'm Jay and today's a redo and continuation of the Death Note videos. When I first did them I thought it was going to be a good idea to split them up until I got to the end and it was painfully short. And then I fell behind on uploading them and now I'm just hoping to get back to posting consistently again. So with that being said, let's get into the story. We begin in the realm of the Shinigami where we get one Shinigami's thoughts. He's bored with his realm, describing it as a rotten mess, as we cut to the human world where we're shown a teenager who looks just as bored in class, staring out the window. Meanwhile, the bored Shinigami, who we now know is named Ryuk, tells his peers that he dropped his death note and has to leave. He's headed to the human world. Elsewhere, we see once again the bored student named Light Yagami as he's leaving school. He comes across Ryuk's death note. After opening it, he believes it to be a joke but curiously he continues reading. The instructions state that after writing the cause of death, details of the death should be written within the next six minutes and 40 seconds. If the cause of death is not specified, the person will simply die of a heart attack. If the cause of death is written within 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. And the note won't take effect unless the writer has the person's face in their mind when writing his or her name. Therefore, people sharing the same name will not be affected. Light scoffs a bit, still skeptical, and eventually falls asleep. Five days later, Light returns to his room and pulls out the death note. He's greeted by Ryuk, who seemingly scares the crap out of him. Ryuk wonders why he's surprised to see him, as by now he's sure Light knows that it's not an ordinary notebook. Light pulls himself together and says he's not surprised to see him, he's actually been waiting for him. Light reveals that he didn't doubt that it was a death god's notebook but just wanted to see with his own eyes. We then find out how truly messed up Light is as he shows Ryuk an entire list of names he wrote. Ryuk is actually the one surprised and says he heard of death notes getting to humans before, but no one has ever wrote so many names in just five days. Most people would be too scared. Light tells Ryuk that he's ready for anything and that he used the notebook knowing that it belonged to a Shinigami. He continues asking Ryuk if he's there to take his soul or something, but Ryuk assures him that he's not going to do anything to him. The moment that a death note lands in the human world, it belongs to the human world. So it's now Light's death note. If he doesn't want it, give it to another human. However, if that happens, Ryuk has to erase all of his death note memories. Ryuk adds that since the note originally belonged to him, Light is the only person who could see or hear him. The death note is the bond between human and Shinigami. Light, still a little weary, asks if there is really no price for using the death note, but Ryu reveals that that's not exactly the case, as there is a terror and torment that only a human who's used the death note will experience. And when Light dies, Ryu will be the one to write his name in the notebook. He also says that the humans who use the death note can't go to heaven or hell, but Light will find out all about that after he dies. Light has one more question. Why did Ryuk choose him? Ryuk laughs, telling him not to flatter himself. He just dropped the notebook and Light just so happened to be the one to pick it up. Light then asks why he dropped the death note in the first place, and Ryuk casually replies because he was bored. He didn't really feel like he was alive, and all Shinigami do is nap and gamble. They'll laugh if they see other Shinigami writing humans' name in their death notes. For Ryuk, it's more fun being in the human world. Ryuk is impressed that Light wrote so many names and Light admits that he was bored too. And also the notebook has the power to make someone use it at least once. Then we get a flashback to when Light wrote the first name. He wonders if he writes the name and that person dies, if that would make him a murderer. He's thinking about whose name to write when on the news he sees a report on a hostage situation. He writes the criminal's name. It takes a moment, but it works and the hostages are safe. At first he thinks it's just a coincidence and wants to try again with someone he feels should die. After going back and forth about it, Light witnesses a woman being harassed by a creepy biker and his friends. After learning the biker's name, he writes it in the death note, with the cause of death being traffic accident. Sure enough, it happens. Light is shocked that he just killed two people, but later justifies it. While having a mini breakdown, he comes to the conclusion that the world is a rotten mess and needs to be cleaned up. With the death note, he believes he can do just that. He questions if he has the guts to go on with it though, and this is where Light makes it his duty to cleanse the world. 
Cutting back to the present, Light admits to Ryu that he's been having bad dreams and hardly slept within the last five days, but he's still on a mission. Ryu wonders why Light only specified the cause of death for one creep, but not the others. Light goes on a psychotically fueled sermon saying that eventually someone will find out that somebody is getting rid of bad guys, and he's going to let the world know that he's there passing judgment on them. No one would commit crimes anymore and the world will start to become a better place. He goes on to say that he'll gradually kill off immoral people and people who harass others with illness and accidents. The idiot masses will eventually notice and soon he'll make the world inhabited only by people he decides are good. Ryuk finds this funny, reminding him that if he does that, Light would be the only bad person left. Light, of course due to his arrogance, doesn't see it that way. He believes he's a model teenager, to which I object wholeheartedly. The next panel doesn't make it any better as Light declares he will reign over the new world, much to Ryuk's amusement. Meanwhile, at the meeting of the International Criminal Police Organization, we see them discussing the recent chain of murders that Light committed, as well as a young man watching them, satisfied that Interpol is looking into them. We cut back with Ryu commenting on how Light is really dedicated to his project, but Light doesn't want to waste time. He wants to write as many names as he can between coming home from school and going to bed. We cut back to the G8 summit, where Interpol is still discussing Light's murders. Some of them wonder if it's actually a good thing or a bad thing considering the victims. After a bit of commotion, they believe this is a case for L, a super genius who's kind of a mystery to them right now. They learn that L is already involved in the case, and his assistant Watari shows up with the laptop for them to communicate with L through. After a brief speech, L says that the murders must be stopped at all costs, requesting full cooperation of the authorities. We cut to Light and his friends as they talk about the way that criminals have been dying lately. When Light gets home, he admits to Ryuk his discomfort with leaving the death note there and discovers a fan page dedicated to him. Of course, no one knows it's him, so they dubbed him Kira. This obviously gives Light more of an ego, but a news broadcast interrupts his chat with Ryuk. In the broadcast, L decides to show his face, confronting Kira. Light, believing L screwed up, writes his name in the death note and watches him die. But this is just a ruse. The man killed wasn't L, but a random criminal who never had his name released to the media, set up by the real L to test Kira. Ryuk finds this funny, and so do I. L demonstrates that he's every bit as smart as Kira, and it angers Light. And we pretty much get confirmation that the young man we've seen at the end of chapter 1 is L. L continues with the broadcast saying that although it was announced to be televised globally, it was actually only broadcast in the Kanto region of Tokyo. L now knows the area Kira is in, and he's curious as to how Kira carries out his murders, and says he'll find out after he catches him. We get a parallel of both L and Light saying they're going to dispose of each other if it's the last thing they do, both believing themselves to be righteous. Of course this adds to Ryuk's amusement even more. We cut back to Light and Ryuk. Light decided to take a break because he's tired and he wants to see what the cops will do. They have more of a conversation until Light's sister Sayu interrupts, wanting Light to help her with her homework. Ryuk, being the mischievous creature he is, informs Light that anyone who touches the death note can see and hear him as well, much to Light's annoyance because Ryuk waited until now to tell him. We learn from dialogue between Light and his sister that Light wants to be a detective. We cut to L wondering why Light didn't kill him when they met, and concludes that it's because he can't see his face. He connects to another G8 summit to discuss more statistics of the murders. L ends asking them to investigate how the victims were reported, if it included photographs or showing their faces. We cut to Light at home and it's revealed that his father is the chief of the MPA. At dinner, Light asks his father about the Kira case to find out what they know. Afterward, Light goes to his room and Ryuk says that the police have narrowed down the Kira suspect to a student in the Kanto region, but Light reveals that he's been acting this entire time to lead them to that conclusion. Now he can use the death note on a different level. We learn from the police that Kira killed 23 criminals all from heart attacks and within an hour of each other. They debate over whether or not Kira is a student and L tells them that while it's possible Kira may not be a student, 
it could be what he's trying to tell them. He tells them that he can set the times of death as he pleases. Continuing in his thoughts, L believes that Kira has a way of getting information only known by the police. And this is a challenge directed at L. We cut back to Light talking to Ryuk. He comes up with a solution to keep his family away from the death note, saying that if he blows it, he's going to have to kill his own family. Now we see L as he's processing his clues on Kira. He contacts Ritari and gets him to go where no police can hear. Then we're back to Light and Ryuk shopping for things to hide the death note. Light's plan is to hide it in his room where he can have easier access to it, while also storing it in a place where his family can't touch it and informs Ryuk that by now L suspects Kira to be someone on the force and if he wants to catch Kira, he needs either the death note or a confession from him. So if he's hiding the death note, he needs to hide it from the police as well if they come to the house with a search warrant. Ryuk asks Light if his father, being the MPA chief, was the advantage that Light spoke of in an earlier conversation, if the cops start closing in, and Light admits it is adding that he can hack his father's computer from his own without leaving a trail and stay on top of the investigation. Ryuk asks why did Light deliberately do something to make L suspect the people involved? Isn't it worse to have him realize he has a link to the police than to be a student? Light tells him that it was good that Ryuk noticed it was strange, but tells him he doesn't have a very good understanding of humans yet. He continues asking Ryuk if he remembers when he told him that humans were foolish two-faced creatures. To answer Ryuk's question, he says he wants to find L and eliminate him. When it comes to the police and L, they don't trust each other. He knows L is going to look for him within the NPA. And when that happens, the police are going to be angry and start tracking L. And they will be the ones to find out who L really is and then Light will kill him. We later cut to headquarters where three police officers are resigning due to their fear of Kira. And L, who is spying on them, learns that Kira must see his victims' faces to kill them. Meanwhile, Light has built an elaborate drawer that will cause a small house fire if triggered. Ryuk comments while most humans have a hard time hiding the death note, Light is the first to go this far. And we cut back to L requesting the FBI to do a full probe of all personnel working on the Kira case, and it's granted. Meanwhile, back to L talking to Ratari, he tells him that either one of the detectives or someone close to them is Kira. Later, Ryuk tries to talk to Light while he's in school. At first, Light is apprehensive because while only he can see Ryuk, he apparently doesn't want to seem crazy. Ryuk wants to let him know something important after clarifying that he's neither on Light or L's side. He noticed within the past couple of days someone's been following Light. Ryuk jokes that while he knows the man can't see him, he still feels like he's being watched. Light says he'll get rid of him soon enough. We're then let into the man's thoughts. He's an FBI agent and for now believes Light is an ordinary senior. Light, upon getting home, concludes that his father is under investigation because of L. He now wants to find out who's the investigator. Ryuk interrupts Light's thoughts, telling him that there are two big differences between Shinigami and humans who use the death note. Shinigami writes names in the death note to get extra life from humans. After a little more info about Shinigami, Ryuk tells Light that a Shinigami's eyes can see humans' name and lifespan over the human's head when they look at them. And there's a deal that the Shinigami can make with the human holder of the death note, which will give the human a Shinigami's eyes, but at a cost. Half of the human's remaining life. Light is tempted, but it's out of the question. He's creating a criminal free utopia and he plans to reign like a god for a long time. Ryuk understands, he just wanted to let him know so that he wouldn't hear Light's you never told me whining later. Light still complains though, saying that this is the sort of thing that should have been said as soon as they met. Ryuk is intrigued by Light. In his thoughts, he says even though he's a Shinigami, Light's never been afraid of him or tried to kiss his butt and even gives him a hard time. A few panels later, after Ryu compares Light to a Shinigami, Light tells him he's using the Death Note as a human, for humans. Light goes back to the ideas of trying to figure out who's been following him. He kills six more prisoners with heart attacks, but makes them do various things before they die. Next, L is in contact with Watari, who lets him know about the recent murders. L contemplates what the victim's actions mean before coming to the conclusion that Kira can manipulate the victim's actions before they die. 
He contacts the MPA and tells them only to tell the media that the victim's deaths were heart attacks, nothing else. They don't want Kira to know if his test worked or not. We cut back to Light and Ryu, where Light explains that he manipulated the victim's actions to test the extent of the death note. His next test, he claims L and the cops won't be able to link to him. L would be too busy trying to find the meaning of the pictures and notes left behind by the victims. But of course, they don't have meanings. Meanwhile, L is thinking to himself, if Kira used the latest criminals as a test, he's about to start something. He now believes that the deaths are possibly not a test, but for another purpose, and L analyzes the messages left by the criminals. Meanwhile, Light sees his latest murder covered in the newspaper. It happened exactly as he wrote it. Positive that the investigator is going to follow him again, he makes a date with the girl he knows. Light meets his date, Yuri, while the agent is still shadowing him. The agent is pretty sure that Light is not here and plans to follow him one last time to be sure. He follows Light on a bus and takes a seat directly behind him and Yuri. Then Light's plan comes into play. His selected victim boards the bus and hijacks it just as planned. Light writes a note to Yuri telling her that he's going to pin the hijacker down. His dad is a detective and taught him how to handle situations like this. The agent tells Light it's too dangerous. Let him take care of it. Light pretends not to trust the agent, which makes the agent reveal his identity. He is FBI agent Ray Pember, and this confirms for Light that L is using the FBI to probe the NPA. Light then tricks the hijacker into touching a piece of the death note, causing him to be able to see Ryuk, and he freaks the fuck out, firing all of his ammo before leaving the bus terrified, then he's run over by an oncoming car. Light wrote this all down in the death note. And that ends the first volume of Death Note. I'll eventually be covering the rest, especially because there are a few comparisons to the anime that I want to point out. So stay tuned for those. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time.